Leviticus 17. Finally, something exciting. More animal sacrifice and eating blood. God, I hope those two things are not connected. It's not that they're much better on their own. Usually, God has a message for Moses that he's supposed to deliver to Aaron and his sons. This time, however, the message is for Aaron, his sons, and all the Israelites because it's really important. So you would think it's about slavery, or love, or kindness and decency. No, God is just hungry again. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons and to all the Israelites and say to them, This is what the Lord has commanded. Any Israelite who sacrifices an ox, a lamb, or a goat in the camp or outside of it, instead of bringing it to the entrance to the tent of meeting to present it as an offering to the Lord in front of the tabernacle of the Lord, that person shall be considered guilty of bloodshed. They have shed blood and must be cut off from their people. This is so the Israelites will bring to the Lord the sacrifices they are now making in the open fields. They must bring them to the priests, that is, to the Lord, at the entrance to the tent of meeting and sacrifice them as fellowship offerings. The priest is to splash the blood against the altar of the Lord at the entrance to the tent of meeting and burn the fat as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. They must no longer offer any of their sacrifices to the goat idols to whom they prostitute themselves. This is to be a lasting ordinance for them and for the generations to come. A lot just happened there. Apparently, the Israelites were just sacrificing animals for the hell of it. No reason. <laughs> An ox? Let's butcher it. Why not? And God steps in to say, no, stop it. Don't do that. Don't kill that animal. Over there. Wait till you're at my house, then do it, because I want the animal flesh. And then you better listen or I'm gonna throw you out of the family. It is messed up that if you slaughter an animal over there, it's considered murder. But if you do it 10 feet over in God's house, it's a blessing. The animal appreciates that, I'm sure. Anyway, on to what you're really thinking. Why are these people prostituting themselves to goat idols? Well, it's because they're cheating on God with other possible gods. It's like The Bachelor, but with genocide. But, let's be honest, less racism. Say to them, any Israelite or any foreigner residing among them who offers a burnt offering or sacrifice and does not bring it to the entrance to the tent of meeting to sacrifice it to the Lord must be cut off from the people of Israel. Dude, we know. You're going to excommunicate everyone who doesn't bring you food. Though, at this point, that kind of sounds like a reward. It's like an evangelical church saying, if you keep having premarital sex, you can't be a member of our club. <laughs> like, you think that's a threat? <laughs> I will set my face against any Israelite or any foreigner residing among them who eats blood, and I will cut them off from the people. For the life of a creature is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. Therefore, I say to the Israelites, none of you may eat blood, nor may any foreigner residing among you eat blood. That's not true. I mean, that's literally not true. We know the blood does not contain your life. You can get a blood transfusion, and you are still you. It's bad science. And who is eating blood? That is a weird way to talk about animal sacrifice, which is already weird. In case you're not familiar, this is one of the big rules for kosher food. You have to drain all the blood from the meat or cook it out before eating it. That's part of how you keep it kosher. Any Israelite or any foreigner residing among you who hunts any animal or bird that may be eaten must drain out the blood and cover it with earth, because the life of every creature is its blood. That is why I have said to the Israelites, you must not eat the blood of any creature, because the life of every creature is its blood. Anyone who eats it must be cut off. Blood is important. Blood is everything. Blood is life. 
And if you kill an animal, I need you to wring its neck like a bath towel to get every drop out of it or I will cut you off forever. God is just a picky eater. He doesn't like birds, so he just came up with a new rule that involves torturing them so you don't have to splash their blood on his altar. I mean, just be honest, God. Anyone, whether native-born or foreigner, who eats anything found dead or torn by wild animals must wash their clothes and bathe with water, and they will be ceremonially unclean till evening. Then they will be clean. But if they do not wash their clothes and bathe themselves, they will be held responsible. So God is saying if something is already dead and you didn't slaughter it, you can eat it. But you gotta take a shower. Unlike the people who slaughter the animals themselves, who are apparently totally clean without a shower. Makes total sense. Here's the takeaway from the whole chapter. Keep the blood out of your mouth. There are plenty of places God enjoys blood, including his altar and on the ground, but not eating it, unless it's already dead. In which case, you know, just take a bath. 